their trades. We have developed a program on education for sustainable development, meant for teacher educators and teachers. There are 16 units divided under four modules. The first module is devoted to sustainable development, nature, characteristics and its aims. The first unit of this program is about sustainable development, its concepts, characteristics and different dimensions. <clears throat> Let us see what are the concepts and characteristics of sustainable development. The first thing is to be kept in mind about the nature of sustainable development is that it is holistic in nature and the development is of futuristic nature. Second point is it integrates social, economic and environmental dimensions of development with futures perspectives. Now let us understand what is development. Development is usually understood as economic growth, progress made in technology, expansion of facilities for human services, creation of new institutions, and making resources available for its utility by the society. When we talk about development, we should also see what we mean by sustainability. Sustainability means to maintain at a certain rate or level or capable of being sustained. Second point is, it is a state to be maintained indefinitely. Third is that it indicates making progress within the caring and productive capacity of earth. Now if you see the perspectives to understand the sustainability, there are three perspectives, the major perspectives which we focus on understanding the sustainability. One is social perspective which includes communities maintain their cultural and economic integrity, livelihood perspective of people, preservation of existing values by people by maintaining a natural resource balance, the environmentalist perspective, it highlights use of an organism, ecosystem or other renewable resources at a rate within its capacity for renewal. Now, we will define sustainable development. Sustainable development is defined as improving the quality of life within <coughs> the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. The development needs to take care of the future generation's needs as well as the present needs of our society. This was highlighted by Broadland Commission Report 1987. Sustainable development has three dimensions. One is economic growth, second is social values, and third is environment. All these three dimensions are interrelated with each other. So when we talk about such interrelated development perspective, it hints at improving the quality of life within the carrying capacity of an ecosystem. Economic growth gives fair opportunity for the development of each and every segment of society without making any discriminations. The third is social and economic development while protecting the natural environment and social equity. Hence, we can see 
this concept as an integration of conservation and development to ensure the modifications to the planet do indeed secure the survival and well-being of the people. Hence, when we defined sustainable development as the development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs is well justified. Let us see what do we mean by these needs. The needs means it indicates meeting the essential needs of the poor people of the world. Here it means essential needs. Environmental ability means the environment should be conserved to meet the present needs as well as the future needs. There are different conferences and declarations that have been made about the concept of sustainable development and the progress that has been made over past 50 years. The United Nations Conference on Environment and Development was first discussed in 1972 and after that the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development which is known as UNCED in 1992 at Rio de Janeiro, which is known as Earth Summit, it talked about the right to development must be fulfilled so as to equitably meet developmental and environmental needs of present and future generations. Following that, in next decade, the World Summit on Sustainable Development which is known as WSSD 2002, it talked about sustainable development as the new global sustainable development goals for full implementation by the year 2030 at world level. It came out with the details list of sustainable development goals, which will be discussed in the last third unit of this particular course. What are the challenges that are faced in the context of the sustainable development and sustainability? The first challenge faced at the world level is to end poverty and hunger everywhere. The second challenge we come across is combating qualities within and among countries. The disparities that exist within the country and disparities that exist among the countries, how it will be combated. Next is the peaceful, just and inclusive societies. No discrimination among people and every community must share the benefits of the world without having any discrimination. Protecting human rights and promoting gender equality and the empowerment of women and girls. And the last is the protection of planet and its natural resources. So here, the three dimensions of economic, social and environmental aspects have been covered in these reports. Next is, what are the suggestions we can give about sustainable development? That is, about consumption and production patterns must cope with natural resources. Democracy, good governance and the rule of law must integrate with sustainable and inclusive economic growth, social development, environmental protection, and eradication of poverty and hunger. Climate sensitive attitude and respect to diversity. Harmony with nature where biodiversity is projected in full sense. Let us talk about the aims. The aims of sustainable development envisage 
a world where every country enjoys inclusive and sustainable economic growth. The consumption and production patterns must cope with natural resources. It aims to envisage a world where democracy, good governance, and the rule of law must be integrated with sustainable and inclusive economic growth, social development, environmental protection, eradication of poverty and hunger. It aims to envisage a world where development process and application of technology need to be climate sensitive with respect to biodiversity. Humanity lives in harmony with nature where biodiversity is protected in full sense. Let us focus on the vision of sustainable development. From social fronts, economic fronts and civic fronts, we come across different visions. The visions of sustainable development that is stated as make the world free of poverty, hunger, disease and want. The world with universal literacy and equitable and universal access to equality education. Safe and sufficient food and portable water for all. Universal respect for human rights and human dignity. The vision also covers the rule of law, justice, equality and non-discrimination to respect race, ethnicity and cultural diversity in a pluralistic nature of our society. Equal opportunity for the full realization of human potential of each and every human being on earth. The vision also continues to insist on every child grows up with free from violence and any kind of exploitation. There should be gender equality and removal of all barriers for empowerment of women. To establish a just, equitable, tolerant, open and social inclusive world. Let us talk about the dimensions of development. When we talk about development, we have come across different areas which have hampered the sustainability. The first one is industrialization. The industrialization has caused a lot of damage to our environment by making use of resources and making use of extrapolating, exploiting the resources by means of different kinds of heavy machines and mechanical gadgets, we have created a lot of pollutants in our environment. The second part is the urbanization. The urbanization has caused migrations in a very uneven manner where the rural people living their own ancestral and cultural affinity, they move to the urban settlements where the disparities exist between the means of livelihood and facilities available for sustainability in their livelihood. Third is inequity. Inequity means in terms of geographic locations, we find some development villages and backward villages, developed cities, mega cities, and poor towns and poor communities. There are very progressive countries with all affluent technologies and the countries with no technology or least technology and least development. The resource utilization has also caused a lot of damage to our environment where the exploitation of resources takes place from one part of the world. By leaving nothing, for the people who are inhabited in that particular geographic area and very few people who inhabit in developed countries 
they exploit resources and they sit at the helm of affairs by neglecting the requirements of poor people habituated in the backward countries. The industrialization and developed, the developed countries exploit the resources, northern countries advanced as compared to southern countries, uneven growth lead to creation of regional disparity, harmful gases in the air causes high pollution, extinction of several species from the earth, urbanization and development, uneven expansion of urban areas, cities depend on the resources supplied by the rural areas, migration of rural workforce to the urban areas, it leads to imbalance in rural economy, particularly the agro-economy and people's dependence on the self-reliance in the rural area. Farmers losing agricultural lands. The productivity activities of rural areas are diminished by monopoly of the market economy. The farmers are tempted to shift focus from agriculture to other farm-related occupations, which leads to unemployment and unstable pattern of earning of people. Inequities and development, the quality of life as measured by Human Development Index is found to be better in developed countries and it is found to be neglected in underdeveloping or backward countries. High level consumption patterns of people in developing countries cause disappropriate damage to global ecosystems. The developing countries, in spite of abundant natural resources, suffer from problems of poverty, hygienic life, lack of nutrition, health, illiteracy, quality education, unemployment, and non-access to the technological support systems. Globalization has caused the economy to be under the control of multinational corporations. The resource utilization and development. The developed countries like Japan, the G8 countries, now of course G7, the European Union having less than 23% world's population, but consumes several times than the resources of the rest of the world's population. The CFC, chlorofluorocarbon gas, is released to a high extent by countries like China, South Korea and Russia. The poor countries are bound to over-extract their resources to the multinational corporations without much restrictions with a view to repay debts from international organizations. The mission of Human Development Project, it says that at international level, through the initiatives of UN and UNESCO, it says that it must contribute towards expansion of opportunities, choice and freedom. The assumptions of human development that say that the development can enable people to make choices. Development is linked with creation of a conducive environment to develop people. People develop their capabilities to lead a productive life in accordance with their needs and creative lives and priorities. Development is beyond the formation of human capabilities. What it says, the development, it leads to realization of human capabilities in every possible sphere of life. Human freedom is an essential component of development. Free people can make better choices in life. Those who are dependent on others, they cannot make choices for their life. Hence, it insists on autonomy of people and freedom of people. It includes participatory approach and people's initiative in the development process. It is not the monopoly of any central organization to take decision for others. Rather, people in group through collaborative and cooperative ventures can make initiatives for their own development. Here, when we focus on Millennium Development Goals, set by United Nations, he talked about eradicate extreme poverty and hunger. Second talk about 
achieve universal primary education, quality primary education, promote gender equality and empower women, reduce child mortality, improve maternal health, combat HIV, AIDS, malaria and other communicable diseases, ensure environmental sustainability and a global partnership for development. These eight areas have been discussed in detail by United Nations document on Millennium Development Goals. Now, when you talk about the dimensions of Human Development Index, we come across there are three dimensions. One dimension is a decent standard of living for each and every human being the long and healthy life and knowledgeable society. The first part said that when you talk about a decent standard of living, then we must have proper per capita income and it must have its major contributions for gross national imports and the GNI index that measures that what is the per capita income and our expenditure for a decent standard of living. The second part talks about life expectancy index. The life expectancy index today that what is the life expectancy at birth and how we maintain a long and healthy life. The third dimension is related to our field called knowledge or education. It means the education index will indicate that how many years of schooling we complete with success and the expected years of schooling and how we complete our school education with quality. When we talk about gender development index, such index is on the three developments are calculated for female and male population respectively. The gender inequality index is also calculated. Human development index of a country takes into account gender inequality, male and female, by SDI female, on the dimensions of long, healthy life and knowledge. The indicators of sustainable development. There are indicators of four areas called as social, environmental, economic, and institutional. Sustainable development <coughs> parameters are four. One is social dimension. The social dimension talks about the equity and health. The sub-themes are the poverty, gender equality, nutritional status, the morality, mortality rate, sanitation, drinking water, health care delivery. And the indicators are the percentage of people living below poverty line and the income inequality and unemployment rate. The ratio of average female wage to male wage is counted for gender equality. Nutritional status of children, mortality rate under 5 years old life, expectancy at birth, percent of population with adequate sewage, disposal facilities, population with access to safe drinking water. Percent of population with access to primary health care facilities, immunization against infectious childhood disease, contraceptive prevalence rate, etc. In the social dimensions, we come across education as one of the parameters. At education level, the children reaching grade 5 of primary education with full completions, the literacy indicates the adults getting secondary education, achievement level and adult literacy rate. The housing 
the living conditions for people, the flow area per person, security, the crime rates, how it is to be reduced, and the number of recorded crimes per one lakh population. The population indicator, the population change, the population growth rate, and population of urban, formal, and informal habitations. The second dimension is environmental aspects of sustainable development. The theme is atmosphere, and the theme is climate change, ozone layer depletion, air quality. The indicators are emission of greenhouse gases, consumption of ozone depleting substances, ambient concentration of air pollution in urban areas. The land dimension is the agriculture, forests, vegetification, urbanization, arable and permanent cropland area, use of agricultural pesticides, forest area as a percent of land area, wood harvesting, intensity, land affected by desertification, areas of urban, formal and informal settlements. The environmental dimensions also continues the themes such as the oceans, seas and coasts. Sub themes cover coastal zones. The fresh water, it covers the fisheries, water quantity and water quality. The biodiversity, it covers ecosystems and species. There are indicators have been discussed in detail on the environmental dimensions of the sustainability. The economic dimensions talks about the economic structure, consumption and production patterns. Consumption and production patterns are directly related to material consumption and energy use. And the economic structure is directly linked to economic performance, trade, and financial status. The indicator of economic sustainable development, it covers the GDP per capita investment share and share in GDP balance of trade in goods and services, debt to GNP ratio, total audio given or received as percentage of GNP. The material consumption and energy use, it covers annual catch by major species, annual withdrawal of the ground and surface water as a percent of total available water, BOD, in water bodies. The consumption and production pattern also covers the waste generation and its management, particularly in the context of urban areas. The generation of industrial, municipal, solid waste, generations of hazardous waste and waste management of radioactive materials and waste recycling and reuse is a great challenge. The transportation index that say that how far, the how much distance travel per capita by the mode of transport. The last part of sustainable development is the institutional framework. The institutional framework is linked with the infrastructure and the strategic implementation of sustainable development, the international cooperation, information access, communication infrastructure, science and technology, the disaster preparedness and response, the indicators cover national sustainable development strategy, implementation of ratified global agreements, number of internet subscribers per 1,000 inhabitants, main telephone lines per 1,000 inhabitants, expenditure on research and development as a percent of gross domestic product, economic and human loss due to natural disasters. Dear friends, when we talk about different parameters of sustainable development on social, environmental, economic and institutional, it should be seen in more inclusive manner and there should be efforts for development of each and every segment of the globe 
and each country should march towards sustainability in development process in integrated and holistic form with a futuristic vision. You have been exposed to the concept and nature of sustainable development and in the next unit we will discuss about the factors and the components of sustainable development in detail. Thank you very much.